A very warm welcome to this, our second occasional video update for the United States of East Anglia Film Project. Uh, we can't, of course, be out there yet filming, but what we thought we'd do is introduce you to a lady who we've met through the Facebook page who's going to be helping us with the film a bit later in the year when we are able to get out there and start filming. So a very warm welcome to Sophie Green. Hello, Sophie. Hello. Hi. Hello. Sophie, what sparked your interest um, in the Second World War? I must have been about 13 um, and there was an open day at our local airfield. I live in Framlingham in Suffolk. Um, so my local airfield is over at Parham, um, which was the home to the 390th Bomb Group during World War II. Um, and they had a big open day. They had a few reenactors. They had a few stalls. But the most thing that first thing that really took me aback was a fly past by the Sally B, the B-17. Um, I remember being stood with my father um, outside as, as she approached. And she, I, just, I, can, I can picture it now coming straight towards me over the cornfields. And ever since then, it, it, it just sparked something. But then as I've got older, um, things have kind of narrowed down quite a lot to um, sort of concentrate on the women's role during the war, and specifically the American women. Um, obviously, a lot of people know about the land girls and the ATS and everything else, but what a lot of people don't realise is all those American men, they brought the ladies with them. Um, and I do lots and lots of reading, lots of research into those women that came over with the men and spent the duration of the war here as well. That's fascinating. And, and Sophie, if I may ask you, it's uh, unescapable, the fact that you're actually in uniform. Can you tell us, uh, A, a little bit about that specific uniform, what it represents? and yeah. and uh, I mean, is this something you you wear all the time, or is this something just for us? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> um, so basically, through through all my research and stuff, when I was about twenty, um, I managed to get involved in living history. Um, it happened by accident. It was some I met some people, and they said, "You know, you should you should get involved in this. You'd be brilliant." Um, and I bought my first uniform and it's evolved from there. I do events all over Europe now, um, but the particular uniform I'm wearing today. Um, is uh, was belonged to a lady who was a member of the Women's Army Corps of the US Army. Um, she would have been attached, I've got a patch, ooh, that shoulder, um, so she'd have been attached to the 8th Air Force, which were based locally around here, and there was quite a few um, members of the Women's Army Corps attached to the 8th Air Force during World War II. Um, they did a lot of the admin roles, they were radio operators, they were aircraft plotters, they did all the um, you know, they looked at all the different photos taken of damage that our bombers had done and sort of, you know, write the reports on, you know, how much damage they did and send that back to the heads of the 8th Air Force. Um, so this particular uniform is their walking out uniform. Um, this is what they'd have worn when they left base, when they, you know, they wore this to work. When they got to work, they sort of took jacket off and rolled the sleeves up and stuff like that. Um, but this is their standard issue uniform. This is what you would have seen walking around the streets in the UK and East Anglia during World War II. Wow, so that is a genuine uniform, not a, a replica. Yes. Um, no, this is this is all original, every single wow. piece. Sophie, given all the research you've done um, over the years and the people that you've met, as we mark VE, how would you imagine people generally felt? Oh, I think it was, especially for the British public, I think it was a massive sense of relief. You know, they, they had lived for six years with this this continuous threat from the enemy, you know, and you had the rationing, all the men were away. And I think, you know, once they knew that that part of VE Day was over, um, there was such a massive sense of relief. The threat was over to our country in particular. Um, and, you know, people felt they could start getting back to some sort of normality. Their loved ones would be coming home. Um, and, this, and then for the, for the Americans, I think, again, it was, you know, a sense of relief, but also a little bit of um, anxiety as well with, with them because the war in the Pacific was not yet over. Um, and I think a lot of the airmen and um, women that were with them knew that once this is over, they're going to have to go over there and finish the job over there as well. Um, so I think that is sort of like the closing of one book, but, but the opening of another, you know, they've then got to start the process all over again in the Pacific Theatre of Operations. Thank you so much for joining us, Sophie. It's been an absolute pleasure not only to uh, to meet you, but to hear those those stories. And you're going to help us, I think, later in the in the year when we do eventually start filming as well. 
yes hopefully <laughs> yeah absolutely thank you very much again for your time and just a reminder to everybody if you've come to find our video here by some other channel maybe on the youtube channel or something do please jump on if you haven't before and visit us at the united states of east anglia facebook page where there's lots more information lots of conversation um, myself maggie in particular engaging with various people and of course sophie as well you're on there sometimes with us as well aren't you yes yes <laughs> Fantastic. So uh, please do join us again. We hope you've enjoyed that. Whatever you're doing to mark the 75th anniversary of VE Day this weekend, please do stay safe. Bye for now. <laughs>